Hi everyone, Ta here. I'm back with another episode of Hit or Miss. I'm gonna show you a bunch of gadgets and you let me know whether you think the product is a hit, meaning you love it, or a miss, AKA I'm not interested. All right, let's get right into it. You know, power banks aren't usually all that interesting, but this one from Aki brings something different to the table. It features a wireless charging and a stand so you can actually charge your phone and watch content at the same time. This little flap at the front and a couple of small rubber contact points is what keeps your phone in place. It'll do up to 10 watts wirelessly and 18 watts when plugged in. I'm also a big fan of the battery indicator. It gives you a full readout of the actual percentage instead of the typical four LED dots. If I had to nitpick, the stand feels a little flimsy and the flap at the front can be a little tough to open if you don't have nails, but yeah. It's a really cool concept, and for 20,000 milliamp hours, it's relatively compact. I like it. Next up is the digital travel kit from Pataka. This is a new gadget that's part of their MagEasy product line. If you've never heard of them, they make magnetic phone cases and accessories that all have this lightweight carbon fiber design. The kit is basically a wallet that stores a bunch of useful mobile tools. You've got a lightning, micro USB, and full-size USB-A adapter, so you don't have to carry one of each. There's also a removable 16 gigabyte flash drive, a SIM ejection tool, and slots to store a micro SD card plus spare SIM. The coolest part has to be the built-in memory card reader. So you can just throw in a micro SD card, plug the integrated cable into your phone, and transfer files back and forth. The whole thing is also an RFID protected wallet that can store up to three cards. You got one on the back of the cover and two in the dedicated card layer. If you only carry a single card, just remove the card layer to make it even more portable. I do feel it's a little expensive, but the high quality build, functionality, and overall aesthetics might make it worth it for some. So before I got this next item, I was literally wiping my phone down with hand sanitizer every time I got home. It might sound a little excessive, but let's be real. Our phones are probably one of the dirtiest things we touch on a daily basis. This is the UV sanitizer with wireless charging from Samsung. So what does it do? It sanitizes your phone or pretty much anything that fits inside with UVC light. You can clean keys, earbuds, sunglasses, watches. If it fits, I'm throwing it in. It's supposed to kill up to 99% of harmful bacteria. I personally don't have any way of proving that claim, so I'm gonna take their word for it. Super simple to use. Just put your phone in, close the lid, and hit this power button at the front. It'll run for 10 minutes, and once you hear the beep, you're good to go. Samsung does recommend that you flip it over and run it for another 10 minutes if you want the best clean. 20 minutes is kinda long, but hey, it is what it is. Like I mentioned, it'll also wirelessly charge your phone up to 10 watts and works with any phone that supports wireless charging. They only give you a USB-C cable in the box, so you do need your own power brick. So along with the S21s, Samsung also launched their very own Bluetooth tracker called the Galaxy Smart Tag. Bluetooth trackers aren't new or anything. I mean, Tal has been doing it for years now. There's a few things to know about the Smart Tag. One, it's battery powered. And two, it's only compatible with Samsung devices. And three, there are two versions, one with Bluetooth and one with ultra wideband, which is launching later. This one's the Bluetooth version. Attach it to something like your keys, pet, or luggage. And if you happen to misplace it, you can locate it through the Samsung SmartThings app. There's a few ways this can be done. You can ring the smart tag and find it by just following the sound. If it's not nearby, you can navigate to it and once you're close, you can use the search nearby function to narrow down the exact location. Samsung also lets you assign an action to a single press or a press and hold of the smart tag. You can notify someone with a custom message or control a smart home device like turning a light on and off. It's definitely a helpful gadget, but I think I prefer Tao's approach since their tracker works with all smartphones. What do you get when you combine sunglasses and speakers? You get the Bose frames. These are audio sunglasses with polarized lenses, AKA sunglasses that you can pair to your phone and play music. 
The speakers are pointed directly into your ear and because they don't block your ears, they don't isolate you from your surroundings. Bose is known for great sounding products and these are no different. They sound really good. It features a plastic lightweight build that fits me great, but might be a little snug on someone with a wider face since these don't expand much. There are built-in mics, so you can take calls with them. But once again, be careful because those around you will be able to hear your conversations. All controls are built into the sunglasses, so you don't need to reach for your phone. The battery is good for up to five and a half hours of playtime and can be recharged with the provided cable. Yeah, I'm not really a fan of the cable. Wish they charged through USB-C instead. This is one of those products where the more I use it, the more I like it. And even if you don't use the audio features, they're still really good looking sunglasses. All right, that's a wrap for this episode. Be sure to let me know in the comments your thoughts on each product and if it was a hit or a miss. As usual, thank you all so much for watching. Until the next one, I'm out of here.